Naya Naya, greetings, all current and future subscribers from Kamat, Reconstructing Ancient Egyptian Culture. I am your host, Patrick McCoy. The pronunciation of ancient Egyptian is one of great debate, with Egyptologists, linguists, and enthusiasts providing interpretations and opinions as to how ancient Egyptian language was spoken. Join us now as we go in depth into the pronunciation of ancient Egyptian with evidence, theories, conventions, and pronunciations. As always, like, comment, and share if you enjoy this video. Support Kamat by using our Amazon affiliate code when making purchases on Amazon.com. Waja Eib Ha'achan. May this please you all. As early as the 9th century, Scholars have made claims in understanding ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs since they are being lost as a dead language from the 3rd century onward. Arab scholars like Jabir ibn Hayat and Ayyub ibn Maslama are believed to have understood hieroglyphs, but no works of these early scholars survive. Arab scholars Dhul Nun al Misri and ibn Washia provided works of phonetic translations of hieroglyphs into Arabic, with many words being correctly identified. In the 13th and 14th centuries, Abu al-Qasim al-Iraqi also provided his own copy of an ancient Egyptian script with phonetic translations into Arabic. During the European Renaissance of the 15th through 17th centuries, European scholars had an interest in hieroglyphs but no belief that it was a genuine phonetic language. It was in the 17th century that Anastasius Kircher, a German Jesuit and polymath, rediscovered the link between hieroglyphs and the Coptic language. But even he only saw hieroglyphs as an abstract avenue of communication instead of a true language. Disappointingly, the pronunciation of ancient Egyptian out of reach until the discovery of a Ptolemaic decree fragment by the endeavors of French colonialism. Close your eyes and inhale deeply, scents that will take you back through the ages to the mysteries of ancient Egypt. This great civilization was world-renowned for products pleasing to the senses, caring for the body, and protective to the skin. Years of research and testing were committed to reconstruct the most effective and luxurious beauty and aromatherapy products from ancient Egypt. Satya Nacharu, Sense of the Gods. Bath, Beauty, Aromas of Ancient Egypt. Find our products online at senseofthegods.com. Under the military campaign of Napoleon Bonaparte, who came to Egypt's shores to defend French trade and make scientific discovery, and defeat the Mamluks of the Ottoman Empire, the intellectual savants made the discovery of a black granodiorite stone that led to unraveling the mystery of ancient Egyptian language. Named after the port town in the Nile Delta called Rashid by the Egyptians, the Rosetta Stone is inscribed with a decree from the priests of Memphis. It goes into the exaltations of Ptolemy V Epiphanes with his generosity in tax deductions and his strength in ending a civil war that began under his predecessor. And behold, his majesty possessed a divine heart which was beneficent towards the gods. He hath given gold in great quantities, and grain in large quantities to the temples, and he hath given very many lavish gifts in order to make Ta'a Marat, Egypt, prosperous, and to make stable her advancement, and he has given unto the soldiers who are in his august service, according to their rank. The priests continue with 
promises to the royal cult of Pharaoh Ptolemy, the erection of his statues, his divine embellishments, and establishment festivals significant to the Pharaoh. The content of the stone is relatively unimportant. What was most significant in reconstructing the ancient Egyptian language was the priests engraved the decree in hieroglyphs. Demotic and Greek Koine, the third being a known language to scholars of the time. Two scholars rose to prominence in deciphering the Madhu Nachar, utilizing the Rosetta Stone. Thomas Young, an English polymath, was able to completely decipher the demotic text using an earlier work of a partially correct compilation of demotic letters by Johann David Ackerblad in 1802, but unfortunately failed to notice that the demotic and hieroglyphic texts on the Rosetta Stone were paraphrased rather than an exact translation, and was only able to translate six phonetic values of hieroglyphs rather than the meanings of the words or grammatical values. A fierce rival of Young, named Jean-Francois Champollion, managed to provide a complete decipherment of the hieroglyphs and published the key to the grammatical system in 1822. His discovery was found not only due to the Rosetta Stone, but also his knowledge of the liturgical language descended from ancient Egyptian and used by the Egyptians of the era. Coptic, the language of the Christians in Egypt from the apostolic succession of St. Mark, was the missing key that allowed a full decipherment of ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. At the age of 16, Champollion argued that Coptic and ancient Egyptian were related during a lecture he gave at Grenoble Academy. This led further to his confirmation that the Demotic script was the Coptic language. Champollion was then able to determine the relationships between Hieratic a hieroglyphic script and used only on papyrus, hieroglyphs carved in stone, and Demotic, a spoken language that used a combination of cursive hieroglyphs and alphabetic signs. With this knowledge, Champollion managed to decipher the hieroglyphs on the Rosetta Stone and thus opened the door to our reconstruction of this dead language. The decipherment of the scripts of hieroglyphs, hieratic, and demotic could not completely provide a full reconstruction of the spoken language, as hieroglyphs and hieratic missed a crucial vowel to pronounce the classical language, and demotic had already evolved during the late period into the Ptolemaic dynasties, where vocal influences of the Neo-Assyrian Empire and later Greek had been introduced into the language. Hieroglyphs, while understood lacked vowels, still provide the vowel phonemes of E and U. The missing vowel is necessary to completely reconstruct the phonetic values of ancient Egyptian words. One source for this vowel can be found in what are collectively known as the Amarna letters, some 350 clay tablets written in Akkadian cuneiform, the official diplomatic language of the day, and were correspondence during the New Kingdom between circa 1360 and 1332 BCE between Egyptians and kingdoms in Canaan and Amuro. They are so named due to their discovery at the city of Akhet Aten or Amarna but represent diplomatic correspondence from Amenhotep III, Akhenaten, Tai, the mother of Akhenaten and widow of Amenhotep III, and possibly Ismenkare, 
or Tutankhamun. While written in Akkadian, these letters are heavily influenced by the writers. Egyptian authors within the office of the correspondence of Pharaoh made reference to the city Man Nafar, or Memphis, that contained this crucial vowel, Ah. Every other text in the period contained these same conventions of ancient Egyptian vowels, Ah, E, and U. Kapash wak sacham Wamat e bak Wasarak san manchu Ba wan ut Jat nafar san e tamu Enaj har Ba patar nafarak Nachtu har taku nab Ha Arak Eve. Ha 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 Ancient Egyptian Combat. The fighters of ancient Egypt were the greatest and feared of the ancient world. Their ways of battle were the most efficient and brutal. Reverence for their discipline so great, tribute came from across the ancient empire to keep the forces of the two lands appeased. Aha! Kamat employs the latest archaeological research to construct the lessons for you to learn the secrets of the Ahatu, the fighters of ancient Egypt. Aha Kamat, ancient Egyptian combat. Find us online at ancientegyptcombat.com In linguistics, reconstructing the phonetics or pronunciation of a dead language is performed utilizing the comparative method. Where two or more languages of common descent are compared, with individual features of side-by-side -side analysis. Within the Afro-Semitic or Hamido-Semitic language family, ancient Egyptian has closeness to the Berber branch, as well as the Cushitic branches of Beja, Oromo, and relations with the entire language family, including Semitic branch languages of Arabic, Hebrew, and Akkadian. However, Ancient Egyptian is a distinct language branch within the Hamido-Semitic language family. Within the comparative method, two specific theories emerge in the reconstruction of pronunciation of Ancient Egyptian. The Ah vowel theory makes the assumption that the vowel placement is based upon the bound construction with the main vowel of Ah and would possibly shift to other vowels based on the stressed syllable. The ah vowel theory is based on the language of Hebrew. The ah e u vowel Semitic centric theory is based on the Hamido Semitic and specifically Semitic branch root and pattern system, which recognizes the use of root words using one, two, or three syllables. This would fall into a particular pattern with similar meaning. Unlike the ah vowel theory, ah e u does not rely heavily on bound constructions, but rather does not deviate from a generalized Semitic grammar system. Ancient Egyptian linguists recognized certain hieroglyphs were used as alphabetic symbols 
as individual phones or sounds. While some hieroglyph phonograms represented biconsonal or triconsonal phonemes, the following serves as an alphabet for individual phones. Terminology and symbols are from the International Phonetic Alphabet, or IPA, relevant to the phones in the ancient Egyptian language, an abridged discussion of IPA definitions is offered. Voiced or voiceless is whether the vocal cords are engaged. Rounded and unrounded refer to the shape of the lips. IPA pulmonic consonants have two categories that intersect. Place, classified by anatomy of the mouth, and manner, which is the articulation or configuration of the anatomy. Labial refers to the lips, which phones in the language are bilabial, meaning both lips, and labiodental, the lips and teeth. Coronal consonants are grouped by the use of the front of the tongue. Parts of the front of the tongue are the apical, or tip, laminal, or blade, and dome, when it is bunched up. Coronal consonants are categorized by dental, using the tongue against the teeth, Alveolar, using the tongue against or close to the superior alveolar ridge, and post-alveolar, touching the tongue to the back of the ridge. Dorsal consonants are articulated using the back of the tongue, called the dorsum. The categories of dorsal are palatal, using the tongue against the roof of the mouth, velar, back of the tongue against the soft palate, and uvular back of the tongue against the uvula. Finally, the laryngeal, which is, which are pharyngeal, involving pharynx, and glottal, involving the glottis. In the manner category, fricatives force the air through a narrow channel of the anatomy. Taps or flaps are a single contraction of muscles. Plosives are when the vocal tract is blocked completely, nasal in which the air is allowed to pass freely through the nose. Approximates have articulators passing somewhat close, but not very close, such as the fricative. African consonants begin as stops and are released as fricatives. Relevant classifications are pulmonic, air from the lungs, sibilants, fricative consonants of higher amplitude and pitch made by directing a stream of air with the tongue towards the teeth. Vowels consist of no constriction of articulators. Relevant classifications of close, the tongue being placed close to the roof of the mouth without touching. Open, with the tongue furthest from the roof of the mouth. And back, highest part of the tongue in the back of the mouth. The mouth is a voiced alveolar tap or flap, and it is produced by a single contraction of the muscles, so that the tongue makes very brief contact with the alveolar ridge. Ra, ra. In some words, it appears to have been pronounced as a voiced alveolar approximate, and may have been pronounced all words by some dialects of ancient Egyptian. It is produced by narrowing the vocal tract at the place of articulation, but not enough to produce a turbulent airstream with either the tip or the blade of the tongue at the alveolar ridge. La, la. The forearm is a voiced pharyngeal fricative, and it is produced by narrowing the vocal tract at the place of articulation, with the tongue root against the back of the throat. Oh. Oh. The hand is a voiced alveolar plosive, and it is produced by placing the tip or the blade of the tongue at the alveolar ridge. Da. Da. The foot is a voiced bilabial plosive, and it is articulated with both lips being pressed together while voicing through the mouth. Ba. Ba. The recumbent lion is similar to the mouth in that it is pronounced as a voiced alveolar tap or flap ra, ra, or as a voiced alveolar approximate la, la. 
the Egyptian vulture is a glottal plosive or stop produced by obstructing airflow in the vocal tract, or more precisely, the glottis. Ah, 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 ah. The single flowering rush is a close front, unrounded vowel. The tongue is positioned close to the roof of the mouth, forward in the mouth, with the lips not rounded. E. E. The double flowering breed is closely related to the single flowering breed, as the close front unrounded vowel is the vocal equivalent of the palatal approximate, which is interchangeable in ancient Egyptian, also known as yod, produced by narrowing the vocal tract at the place of articulation, with the middle or back part of the tongue raised to the hard palate. Ya. Ya. The owl is a voiced bilabial nasal, and it is produced with both lips being pressed together while voicing through the mouth, while some air is allowed to escape through the nose. Ma. Ma. The quail chick is two different sounds depending on its position in a word. Primarily, it is a close back rounded vowel and it is produced with the tongue being positioned close to the roof of the mouth and back of the mouth without creating a constriction with the corners of the lips are drawn together and the inner surfaces exposed ooh ooh the second sound of the quail chick is a voiced labial LR proxima. Wa. Wa. The lion body is a voiceless palatal fricative and it is produced by constricting airflow without vibration of the vocal cords through a narrow channel at the place of articulation, causing turbulence, articulated with the middle or back part of the tongue raised to the hard palate. Cha. Xia. The horned viper is a voiceless labial dental fricative produced constricting airflow without vibrations of the vocal cords through a narrow channel at the place of articulation, causing turbulence with the lower lip and the upper teeth. Fa. Fa. The cobra is a voiced post alveolar affricate and produced by first stopping the air flow entirely, then directing it with the tongue to the sharp edge of the teeth, causing high frequency turbulence with the blade of the tongue behind the alveolar ridge and the front of the tongue domed at the palate. Ja. Ja. The hill is a voiceless uvular plosive and produced by obstructing airflow in the vocal tract entirely, articulated with the back of the tongue at the uvula. Call. Call. Water is a voiced alveolar nasal and is produced by obstructing airflow in the vocal tract through the nose with either the tip or blade of the tongue at the alveolar ridge. Na. Na. The garden pool is a voiceless palatal alveolar fricative and it is produced by channeling airflow along a groove in the back of the tongue up to the place of articulation, at which point it is focused against the sharp edge of the nearly clenched teeth, causing high frequency turbulence articulated with the blade of the tongue behind the alveolar ridge and the front of the tongue domed at the palate without engaging the vocal cords. Sha. Sha. The houseplant is a voiceless glottal aspirate and it is produced by forcing air through the glottis without engaging the vocal cords. Ha. Ha. The doorbolt is either a voiceless alveolar fricative pronounced with the tip or blade of the tongue against the alveolar ridge just behind the teeth without engaging the vocal cords. Sa. Sa. 
or a voiced alveolar fricative, which is produced the same way, with the tongue against the alveolar ridge, but engaging the vocal cords. Za. Za. The woven stool is a voiceless bilabial plosive and produced with the airflow blocked completely by the lips without engaging the vocal cords. Pa. Pa. The folded claw is a voiceless alveolar fricative and it is produced with the tip or blade of the tongue against the alveolar ridge. Sa. Sa. The tether is a voiceless palatal alveolar sibilant affricate. It is produced by first stopping the airflow entirely, then directing it to the blade of the tongue behind the alveolar ridge, and the front of the tongue domed at the palate without engaging the vocal cords. Cha. Cha. The twisted wick is a voiceless fem the twisted wick is a voiceless pharyngeal fricative, and it is produced by constricting airflow through a narrow channel at the place of articulation, causing turbulence with the tongue root against the pharynx without engaging the vocal cords. Ha! Ha! The basket with handle is a voiceless velar plosive, and it is produced by obstructing airflow in the vocal tract back of the tongue at the soft palate without engaging the vocal without engaging the vocal cords. Ka. Ka. The jar stand is a voiced velar plosive and it is produced by obstructing airflow in the vocal tract with the back of the tongue at the soft palate while engaging the vocal cords. Ga. Ga. The bread loaf is a voiceless alveolar plosive. It is produced by obstructing airflow in the vocal tract with either the tip or the blade of the tongue at the upper teeth without engaging the vocal cords. Ta. Ta. The two diagonal slashes is a cursive representation of the two flowering rush and it is produced the same way. Ya. Ya. The rope coil is the cursive representation of the quail chick, and it is produced the same way. Oo. Oo. Wa. Wa. This sign is unidentified, but theorized to be representative of the placenta. It is a voiceless velar fricative and it is produced by constricting airflow through a narrow channel at the place of articulation, causing turbulence with the back of the tongue at the soft palate without engaging the vocal cords. Ha! Ha! The final phone that was found written only in Akkadian within the Amarna letters or in Coptic. It is the open back unrounded vowel and it is produced with the back of the tongue positioned far from the roof of the mouth with, un with unobstructed flow of sound with the lips unrounded. Ah. Ah. Yeah, I need to